everyone, welcome to another defaultroot.co.uk uh, video. Today we're going to do a, a very brief um, mini topic, if you will, on OSPF and we're going to cover off default information originate. Um, default information originate is all about getting a default route into your OSPF topology uh, using a very specific keyword in, in Cisco or iOS. So um, let's have a look at the topology first. It's a very very basic topology. Today we're going to be having um, R1 as our main uh, router for uh, originating the default information. R8 is going to ask our, act as our internet provider. Uh, R1 is going to be our internal sort of CPE device. You can see R1 is connected to two routers, R2 and R4, and we're going to in originate a default route into the OSPS process. R2 and R4 are part of that, so they should see the default route once we've uh, done what we need to do. So let's let's crack on. So R1, um, R2, R4 are all running OSPF right now. Let me just show you the configuration for that. Um, so there's R1's uh, configuration. Very basic. We've configured a, a router ID 1.1.1.1 because we're R1. And we've basically bound the OSPF process to all of the uh, network interfaces with that wildcard statement there. R2 uh, looks exactly the same. Um, with a different router ID. We're also redistributing some routes there. That's for another video um, which we can go through later on on VRFs. Um, if you want to check that out then go go right ahead. And uh, R4 is the other is the other router and um, There's the configuration for that. So very basic, just a router ID and a network statement. Easy peasy. Um, if we go on R2, we'll just be able to show IP route OSPF, and we can see list all the IPS, all the OSPF routes that we've learned so far. Um, so that's great. So you can, in fact, you can see R1's uh, loopback interface in there, which, which is, which is good to see. So like I say, we're going to use default information originate. So let's have a look at that keyword itself. Go into configuration mode. And go into your OSPF process, and you can see if you do a default question mark, you'll see you've got some choices there. Um, information uh, information is is what we're looking for. Originate, yeah, and then we've got some some sub options here. So um, let's just cover off the, the default, which is default information originate. Let's hit let's hit return, and let's go to R2 and see if we've got the route. Now I know we won't. I'll go through that in a minute, but you can see we haven't got. A default route in there at all. The way this works, um, default information originate will only originate the default route, i.e. advertise the default route, if it has already got a default route, which it doesn't. Let's have a look at the IP routing table on R1. You can see it's not in the table. So let's let's put the uh, default route in the table now. We'll just create a static route and we'll point it at null zero. Uh, yeah, there we go. And now, because we've got a static route in that table, yeah, um, we should be able to see it in R2's table. And there it is. So for default information originate to work without any other options, the router avatar originating that default must already have a route to default. Sounds, uh, sounds weird when you say it like that, but actually it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, if you haven't got a default route, then uh, why would you want to advertise one, you know? you could create sort of a black hole there. In fact, what we're doing right here is we're creating a root black hole anyway, because we're saying that any networks other than the ones we don't know about send to null, basically send to the bucket. So uh, that's not probably the best thing. So what other options have we got here? Let's go, let's go into, in fact, let's just take that, take that root out. Null zero. So now there's no, there's no static uh, root to null zero there. Let's go to R2 and see if that's gone. And it has. So that's great. So back into the OSPF process, let's take the default information, default information originate out. Let's take that out. Um, let's 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 have a, we wouldn't have to take it out, but let's just, let's just have a look at the uh, at the other options on here. So we've got always metric, metric type, and route map. So 
you don't need uh, so this is another this is another uh, tweak on here you don't actually need to have the default root in uh, in the routing table on the router originating the default you can use the always keyword so now we've taken the static root to null zero out and we're not advertising the default root to r2 let's use the always keyword so the syntax is exactly the same except we put the always keyword on the end so it's default information space originate space always on r1 and remember we've got no default root here so if we do a show ip root 0000, 000, 000, 000 we we'll still see it's not in the table now let's go to r2 and see if we've got a default root and we do because we use the always keyword the always keyword overrides the fact that we don't need a, a root to default in our in our um, active routing table on the originating router so that's good Let's take uh, let's take that statement out again now. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look what other options we had there. We have metric, metric type, route map. So metric is basically adding, as you all know, a metric to a route. We don't really need to uh, worry too much about that. Metric type. This allows us to change the uh, the type of the route that we're they're advertising. So if we wanted to default, if we want to advertise the default route and change its metric type, so it could add metric. Uh, we change it from a type 2, which is the default, uh, to perhaps a type 1, and then it would it would gain some metric. So this one's got a forwarding metric of 1. It's type external 2. Let's change... Let's put the always keyword back in there, so we don't need to worry about having the static. And we'll change the metric type to um, to 2. Type 2. And 2, 2. Uh, sorry, idiot. One. Um, so now, if we go into here, instead of it having external type two, it should have external type one, which it does. And uh, it's got a metric of two, not a metric of one. Yeah. So uh, OSPF type one uh, routes can uh, again can uh, accrue metric as it goes through the network, whereas external type two, it's always it's always going to be the same. Um, right. So that's that's that. I've covered that off. Let's get rid of this again. Um, so what was the other option? Uh, route map. So a route a route map allows us to uh, manipulate um, how we how we originate this route or or the reasons for why we would originate the route. So right now we've had default information originate with no options, and there you have to have the static route in the table. We've got default originate always, and that advertises the default route. If uh, always, whether it's in the routing table or not, wouldn't it be nice if we could advertise the default route based on um, our routing table, right? So, so in this case, we've got um, if I just do a show IP route here, you'll see we've got some uh, BGP routes learned from our um, our upstream internet host. If you remember, R8 was our upstream internet host. That's um, sending us some BGP routes down, and we're learning those. So they're in our BGP table. If if this was a full routing table, then that would be um, you know 280,000 um, or whatever routes. In fact, it's 380,000 routes, um, and that would be that would be great. So, you know, so we'd have all the routes to the internet that we needed. We don't we wouldn't need a default route, um, and so then we could legitimately advertise a default route and know everywhere in the, in the world to go. So maybe we want to do um, a route map to, to just check a few of these routes exist in the table and based on all of those or one of those um, advertise the default route okay so let's go ahead and, and create this route map now so uh, in the default, default information originate statement we call it BGP exist so route map BGP exist and we're gonna match IP address and then we have to give it a name of an access list we can also use a prefix list um, to what we'll use we'll do both just to make uh, just to make you guys uh, see what we're up to here, so match IP address and then an access list number. We'll we'll call it access list one, and we'll set. Um, we don't have to do this bit, but we'll set metric type uh, type one. So it's the uh, it's the one where the metric can can grow external type one. Come out of here, and now we create the access list. So access list one uh, permit and the uh, network was 0 and there's a 24-bit mask, so it's the wildcard, so in the inverse mask, and um, and that's it. Let me just check that. Uh, did I did I put this statement in the in the OSPF command? Do you show around uh, OSPF? 
Yeah, there we go. So default information originate route map BGP exist. We've got the route map BGP exist. Permit 10, map type address 1, set metric type 1. Um, so there we go. Hopefully now in uh, route 2 we should have a default route and we do. Um, again, external type 1 because we set the type in the uh, in the route map and uh, that's that's there based on the fact that it could see um, access list 1 permit 160.1.3.0 uh, it could see that route so let's let's rip that out let's let's not advertise that route uh, we can do that easy enough oops let's just do a no interface loopback 2 which I think was um, show IP interface brief yeah, that's so I've got 1, 2.1, 4.1, 5.1, not 3.1 anymore. So I'm not going to be sending 3.1 in the BGP update. So actually, let's just check that. Is that right? Let's do a show IP BGP neighbor. Um, we got 150.1.10.1. Advertise routes. We're sending, yeah, 1, 2, 4, and 5. So R1 should no longer be able to see 160.1.3.0 in its route table. Show IP root 160.1.3.0, not in the table. So we should stop sending the default root. And there you go. Um, so let's change this now. I see I've already got my syntax in there actually. So I've written, I've pre-written an access list. Um, the access list was IP prefix list. Sorry, I've done a, I've done a prefix list. Uh, the syntax is IP prefix list one. You can use any number there. Um, sequence number five, permit 160.1.1.0 slash 24. So that's the route we're going to be matching. Um, that should be in the routing table. 160.1.1.0. It is. So to, to get this one to be used, we just basically change the way OSPF uh, is originating the route. So default information originate. Um, let's get rid of the. Uh, Let's give it uh, actually that's no, the route map, isn't it? Big pardon. So let's just um, edit the route map and we'll go route map BGP exist. We'll say no match IP address one. And instead we'll say match IP address prefix list. And then uh, it was the number of the prefix list. And then if you remember rightly, it was one. So IP prefix is one, so it was five permit, da da da. So match IP prefix uh, IP address prefix list one. Everything else in the route map stays the same. Let's just confirm that. Um, begin route map BGP exist. There's the there's the route map BGP exist. Match IP address prefix list one set metrics type one, and um, so so we we already had that route in the route table. Um, should I, let me find this. Show IP route one sixty dot one dot one dot zero. There's the route. So now we're using a prefix list. We're matching that route there. So hopefully this should now be advertising the default again. And it is. So there you go. I think that covers off uh, default information originate for OSPF. Uh, thank you for listening.